Hi guys and welcome along to a Register 360 podcast. Today I'm joined by Ed Lewis. How are you Ed? I'm good, thank you. Good, so today we're going to be discussing who we think the best player in the Premiership is. So we've narrowed it down to a short list of a top six, uh, which are De Bruyne, Hazard, Salah, Kane, De Gea and N'Golo Kante. Now let's start with De Bruyne. We're going to run through each player, pros and cons, and we're going to come up with a short list of our top three. So it'll be interesting to hear what you guys say at the end. So let's start with De Bruyne. What do you think, Ed? Well, obviously he had an absolutely fantastic season last season. Mm. I'd say comfortably the best player in their team. In, in the place. City team? Yeah, in the City Pro- team. Arguably the team that was the best that Premier League's ever seen. Arguably, yes. Yeah. Arguably, yes. Um, I mean, his passing range is fantastic. Mm-hmm. He scores. I mean, I watched the other day on Premier League years. Um, he scored a goal against Spurs away. And it was the whole game. Spurs been fouling on him. He'd been, I think it was one Yama, mm-hmm. just, to, just as a destroyer. And he whacks his goal with his left foot. Mm-hmm. And he celebrates with anger. And that's what I like He's two-footed as well. His yeah, goal, I mean, his, his goal against Leicester last yeah. season was something special. Uh, yeah, and in, in terms of he hits it very hard and very low. It's like Tom Huddleston, but you know he's got an ability mm-hmm. beyond that, and that he can play football as well. I, I would go as far as saying is if he was injured for the ent- entirety of the year last year, uh-huh. I think they probably would have still won it. But I think what they they were twenty was it twenty five points something ridiculous ahead of yeah, well, twenty know, points ahead of United. Yeah. I think that would have been reduced to about five or ten points. He was that important well, in that City I mean, team. You think he was that good that who would have played instead of him? You still have top yeah, players, yeah, like, but you yeah, have like Bruyne. Gundogan who would yeah. have come in, but they they offer something different. De Bruyne, I've I've not seen a player since maybe um, like a Gerrard in his prime uh, in the Premiership who is completely box to box, controls the pace of a game, and is and has always delivers the right pass. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. His decision making is good. Mm-hmm. Also, set good. pieces. Have we seen someone as good at set, uh, set pieces as De Bruyne since uh, Beckham? Well, Ronaldo was quite good. But he wasn't. He was a great free kick taker, but was he? De Bruyne takes every cross, and you always, yeah, whenever yeah. City get a, uh, a cross, you always think they could score. And they've got players like Otamendi and company who are good in the air, John Stones. Mm-hmm. So I think he offers so much. We'll come to this at the end. I. I'm leaning towards De Bruyne mm-hmm. as the as the best. I actually think he was unlucky to miss out on players' player of I mean, the year. I mean, the problem with that is that Salah, you can't in an age dominated by Salah, you just can't. I mean, he was you're so right. It, yeah, in terms of goal scoring. Yeah, in ter- just, how clinical he was. Yeah. You're right, but um, I do think De Bruyne was unlucky, and if he was to continue this form over the next two or three years, he'll go down as a Premier League great up there with the top Premier League centre midfielders of Lampard, yeah. Gerrard, Vieira, Keane, Scholes. And he'll, he'll be right in amongst that, 100%. that list. Yeah. Um, any weaknesses to his game, you think? Well, there's silly ones like he's not the quickest in the world, but that's not his game. So. Yeah, OK. Um, I, I, think, I think he's one I mean, of the best central midfielders yeah, in the world. I, I agree. M- maybe Modric is better. Kroos as well, I'd say. Yeah. I haven't seen Kroos play a couple of times. Mm-hmm. He's really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's difficult to argue anyone's better. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's move on to number two. Uh, I think he's one of your favourite players, Eden Hazard. Yeah, so, well, I don't want to give too much away, but he is my pick as the yeah, best player yeah. in the league. I just think when you see him play, he just beats everyone in front of him. <laughs> I mean, he just does it very... And he looks very, very easy on the eye. A lot of tricks, flicks, but I mean, okay, you see some, obviously all players dive and cheese a bit nowadays, mm-hmm. but it's not even, I mean, it's game management. Exactly. I mean, when I saw, I mean, this isn't the Premier League, but it's the World Cup. Yeah. You see Hazard, you see Neymar in the same game. And you oh, see Neymar, I think that's harsh. Yeah, go on. See, being tackled and rolling. It's the excess rolling. You see Hazard, he but gets does that, fouled. Does that define how good a football player you are? Well, no, because not only does he do that, he also essentially, for me, won the game for them. Against Brazil? Off, yeah, with his off-the-ball movement. Well, you, I think he had a fantastic game against Brazil, but I think you're, you, you, what I remember of that is that in the last 10, 15 minutes, he was fantastic at sort of closing out the game, mm. winning fouls. I've never, there's been no one better in the Premier League in the last five years who can actually sort of 
take the ball and if he's in a tight area, he'll just win a foul out of no. literally, literally nothing. So yeah. nothing's on. He's got two defenders around him and he'll find a way to win a foul. However, I do have a few things about Hazard. Of is, is he clinical enough? For, for a player that I know he drops deep as a forward... Yeah. But he's still, he's still what a left mid, a left winger, a left forward sort of player, and as and as well, he's also played. I know in a relatively defensive side, he still played up front for Chelsea no, no, a few he times. Didn't. No, I mean last season he was playing up front. Yeah, most the whole time. He um, scored. He scored. He scored I understand 12. that he's not. He's not that selfish, and I think that may, this may be yeah. the whole problem mm-hmm. that might help him in terms of being. Mm-hmm. You know, a Ballon d'Or winner one day. Yeah, I do. I do. That he yeah. isn't. He will if he sees people with a shot. He won't just like dribble off and take it away from mm-hmm. them. He will say, "I'm going to pass to you," and they'll. But that maybe can be a good him. thing. That can be a good thing, but I think sometimes, in terms of, well, as I said before, like stats are such a huge part of the mm-hmm. modern game. He's when not- you say he is so good, he keeps the ball so well. He is so talented, mm-hmm. but you, when someone has a game, a season when they score 40, 50 goals. In the count, in the overall every competition, you can't really say well. He scored twelve scored, Premier League goals last year. In a team that didn't play that well and were quite defensive, okay. I still think. And there was a number of games I saw him, and I thought, you know what, mm-hmm. he's been clearly the best player on the pitch, even if he didn't score or assist. Yeah, that's fair enough. I do think though that if he's ever to be considered amongst the greatest and win, for example, the Ballon d'Or, mm-hmm. he has to introduce goal scoring into his game. There's no reason. Why? Because he's got all the talent for it. Yeah, There's no yeah, reason yeah, yeah. he's not scoring like 20, 20 plus goals a season. As time as time at Chelsea, this is in all competitions. He's never scored twenty goals a season. No, never. No. Which Frank Lampard was scoring twenty goals a season, and he played central midfield. I mean, obviously Lampard was an exceptional football player, but but I do think for Hazard to be considered the best player in the Premier Premier League and to be sort of considered the best outside the Messi. And Ronaldo bracket, he has to be scoring thirty goals in all competitions. Uh, uh, once he hits that point, yeah, you will say he's got it all. Yeah, what does he not have? So, and as, as well, the other thing that I know, I know it was two or three years ago, but he went with that season of. I know the season that is. Well, I mean, I mean, I've said this for a long time. It was a full season. season. That one season when he was genuinely quite well, shambolic. It, that is real. It's very difficult for you to say. Yeah. You know, if you're that good, you can't have that season where you're that. Thirty-one bad. Premier League games, four goals. Hmm. I mean, that's also a question of his attitude. And that I reckon if he... you played for Chelsea, you'd get five goals. I mean, I don't think <laughs> I'd get one. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was that was a terrible season for him. That was terrible. But then. I mean, you look at the season after that. He, he, he was, was the catalyst in the two... You do have to acknowledge he has been the catalyst in the two title-winning years that Chelsea have had. In recent seasons, yeah. In, re- in 2014-15 and 16-17. The reasons they won the I league. mean, a lot of it, and why I think he's so good, is just based on just watching him play. And you just see him and you think, this guy's comfortably the best player on the pitch. I mean, you've seen in the World Cup this year, I saw De Bruyne and Hazard playing the same team. And nearly every game I saw, I thought... You know, as as good as De Bruyne is, as I just has that extra special level. But with, Hazard's got that more talent of being able to beat a man. He's more exciting to watch. Yeah, but so is he more important? Ability. No, but is he more important for the team? I think De Bruyne's more important. He's able to control the pace of the game. The He's able to slow it down. The question isn't who's the be- most important player for their team. It's who's the best player in the league, and Hazard okay. is, is the best player in the league. We know that he might be the most talented player in the league. Doesn't mean he's the best. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, that is true. But and surely, the, I think I think the best player in the league is the player who offers the the most in the league in terms of wins the team the most points. Um, he but offers, Hazard does win almost. I mean, every time if Hazard plays well, the chances are City will um, City Chelsea will win. Yeah, that's fair, but. They still have a good side. They still have players around. So, do you think if Hazard was to move on to Real Madrid, Chelsea would Chelsea, suffer? Chelsea would really suffer. Indefinitely, hundred yeah. percent, they would. Okay, interesting. Okay, let's move on to number three. So, Mohamed Salah. So, Ed, what do you think about the Egyptian king? I think his season last season was nothing short of fantastic. The best, best player, best season a player in the Premiership's ever had. No, 
because I think Ronaldo 07 08 scored more. Scored but more. Ronaldo was more. I mean, they won the league as yeah. well in terms of just all outright ability. Ronaldo was better, but that's all the question in terms of his season last season. Salah was well for me the best player in the league. Yeah, I last think, season he was. I always when it comes to the players' player of the year award, I always find find a bit uneasy when the the team that have won the league, yeah. the player doesn't come from that side. Yeah, I mean, I was thinking, well, throughout the season, I was thinking, it's got to be De Bruyne. Yeah. But when Salah just kept scoring... There was scoring, a game, against, I think it was against Watford, where he, obviously Salah was sort of level with Kane sort of going throughout the season. Yeah. And against Watford, he scored, I think, four. He did. And then it was like, okay, well, this guy has to be considered as the yeah. favourite now. I mean, so he was, his finishing mm-hmm. was unerring. I remember I'd seen him play... I think it was two seasons ago he played mm-hmm. for Roma against Real Madrid yeah. in the Champions League and he made like five or six chances mm-hmm. on his own Yeah, missed them all and I was thinking God, if this player can score mm-hmm. he's really really good Yeah, but that was never suggesting that I think when he signed for Liverpool mm-hmm. last season that he'd be anywhere near the player he was Yeah, I mean mm-hmm. I was surprised in a good way yeah no he was. Uh, yeah exactly I was, I was very surprised do you think he relies on sort of the system and the players around him. You've got Firmino, who had a fantastic season. Mane, who was brilliant again. Yeah. And and sort of, it suits him. Although he was a right winger, Firmino drops in. Oh, 100%. Salah goes on, sort of, not to the number nine role, but he goes in and behind the, 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 the defence. I mean, people would say he's a winger, but last season he didn't really play out wide. No, like, on FIFA he was, like, right forward, yeah, sort of. He's, even a striker at in times. That, in the... Exactly as you said, Firmino drops back. Salah is then on the last mm-hmm. defender, not playing out wide as an inside forward. Yeah. So, I mean, the system definitely suits him. If they played 4-2-3-1, would he have got as many goals? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, I don't think so as well. And I don't even think you'd be, he'd be in this conversation if they'd played a different system. I think, no. I think they've, they've adapted the system and they've yeah. brought in the talent to play that way, where it's sort of the three players and it's a, such a high press. Yeah, 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 yeah 100%. He's um, so quick. Once he's in behind, and given that his finishing was so good, he wasn't going to miss. As, aside from, I mean, I think I said Hazard was the best dribbler, but looking back, I think maybe Salah, sort of, especially in that area in the box where he's so nippy and agile. Remember the goal against Spurs to make it two one when yeah, um, it looked like he. I don't think I don't think times. anyone else but Messi could do that. Yes, could I score mean that I did goal. see that watching that game. Yeah, but in terms of. Like his dribbling is very much, it's very good. Mm-hmm. But Hazard is so close. Like the ball is like Messi, glued to his foot the whole time. Yeah. And he is able to sort of dribble more. I do think deep. Hazard's Whereas, maybe got more control. Yeah, in terms of Salah's dribbling is good when he's already sort of at full pelt. Mm-hmm. And if you touch him, he goes down, that's it. Yeah. So, you know, if you play the ball in behind, Salah will just go straight. Direct. He's more direct. He is more direct and, and he's more clinical. So. Yeah, he's effective. Yeah, very effective. well, he was last season. Now, the big question is. And this happens every single time yeah. when someone has a good season yeah. and it's their first good season. Is he a one season wonder? I don't think he's a one season wonder, but I would be surprised if he had as good a season this season. What what would qualify as a good season for him? So he scored thirty two Premier League goals. Yeah. Um I, I, I think, think anything more than 20. More than 20? I think he'd be disappointed if he didn't hit 25. Especially when Liverpool, I think, will be the closest team to push Manchester City no, this year. I agree year. as well. I mean, it depends because they've also brought in... Well, they brought in... How many new fielders have they got? Um, Keita and um, Fabinho. Yeah. Um, and, well, they wanted to bring in Fakir. I don't think they'll do so now. But that probably they got Shakiri means... instead. Yeah, well... He won't get inside. No. But, um, so... They've got I mean, a lot of attacking talent. probably say exactly the same formation as they played this season. Yeah. So then I think he probably will get, well, he should get about 20 goals. At, and I think that's at, a good, least. for someone who's not an out-and-out striker, Yeah. that's a good season because you then mm-hmm. say, well, Mane wasn't quite as good as he had yeah. been the season before that. Mm-hmm. They didn't really rotate as much as well up front. Mm-hmm. But now they've got a viable option in Shakira who is very, very good. Yeah. They can afford to rest him a bit more. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I do think that for a player to be considered the best in the league, uh, sort of at this current moment, you've had to have sort of proven it over maybe two, three years, yes. as opposed to yeah. as opposed to That's just that I one think, season. I think if we look at this 
next if we were to do this podcast next season mm-hmm. and Salah had had the same season he had this season yeah I think you'd say yeah maybe he is the best but yeah. at the moment it's difficult to say he yeah is. okay so moving on to number four uh, Harry Kane well Harry Kane well uh, do you know when he first came through and the same thing we had the conversation if Salah you know has another season is he a one season wonder yeah, yeah. everyone thought Kane it's now his fourth season is he a one season, season wonder I remember yeah. having an argument with someone well, an argument, a discussion yeah. <laughs> um, with someone about whether Kane was world class yeah. at the beginning of the season I would have said this season this- yeah this season I said I don't think he is because he hasn't proven it in the Champions League yet however he was the top scorer in the group stage of every team yeah and I mean he's just he's so he doesn't he's not for how many goals he scores he's not that clinical but he will make seven or eight chances a game and he will score two I think he three. is clinical uh, I, I, if you look at his as in terms of actual amount of like one on one he makes a lot of shots and a lot okay, of chances okay but it's because I've never seen a striker who's got a shorter back lift as he does when he sees the goal the issue he has is he'll He'll get the ball away out of his yeah. feet so quickly, and it will often go back across the keeper, and the defense defender's not had the chance to block it, or it's gone through their legs, yeah. and he scores so many goals by sort of catching the keeper off guard. He'll score a lot of goals that you think the ball's not gone in the corner there, but it's because he's hit it early and yeah, the keeper's yeah. not set, and you think, well, and he's and he's, he's he's the power in his shot is ridiculous. I mean, I th- I personally think he's the best number nine. In the world, there is. I, I, I don't think there's a better number nine. There are other strikers out there who sort of drop in and yeah, you're not have more to the game. And Messi is a number nine. Then. No, and they're not. I mean, they sort of. I mean, Ronaldo there. sort of is nowadays, but he he has a little bit more where he drops in and he likes to pick the ball up on, more on the edge of the box. Yeah, no, 100. And when Kane came through, he was a number ten. Yeah, so he's still got that part. He does game. have. He's like. He I'd say he's like a nine and a half sort right, of. So, which is fantastic. That's what mm-hmm. you know. The top players need to have. But I, I think. I think he struggles. I think he's clever. So we saw with England when he um, when he kept, we ended up playing a system where he'd drop in and you'd have Sterling running yeah, off, yeah, yeah, off yeah. him, and it sort of worked against the weakest sides. But against Croatia, yes, he was good at winning fouls and stuff. But I, I feel like. He he ended up struggling. He's not like um, a Thierry Henry who no, Henry he's not gonna beat Henry could players. yeah exactly yeah. Henry could drop deep, beat two players and give it. Kane's going to drop deep, win a foul or play the correct pass. Yes. Yeah. So he's a different sort of player in that regard. But I do think we have to just just look at his stats. They're they're outrageous. 135 goals in 187 games. Yeah. That's over the last four seasons. I mean, I think for me. I mean, do I see him winning the league at Spurs? No. Do I see him winning the Champions League at Spurs? No. If he wants to improve winning his a career, trophy at Spurs. Yeah, I, it's difficult to say. I mean, I really don't see it. So maybe he needs to move to a bigger club where he has, you know, a proven winner who will speak to him and say, look, you have the chance now to say... But he just signed a six-year contract. Yeah, well, that's the thing. And I think he'll stay... He'll definitely do you think, he'll be, do you think, think he'll be like an Alan Shearer where he'll just play for his... I think it'll be a shame if he is. I think he was. Because I know Shearer always says, do I regret never leaving? No. And he probably doesn't. Probably does mean it. Probably but does regret it. He got offered to play for Man United during the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah. He, will have, he will have won everything. Yeah. And that would then... I mean, I was, when I was... I was living in Madrid. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I had international friends. And we were watching England football. Yeah. English football and Shearer was a, a pundit and I yeah. said do you know who that is and all of them they know their football yeah no idea and I think okay football's more global yeah. nowadays but you're thinking you know maybe 10 years or whatever yeah if Kane, kids might not know or 20 Kane, years kids they, won't and they know. should do yeah 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 because he is that good yeah but I think he needs to I don't know where to yeah because I don't know who would one is first of all take him second of all whether he'd want to go yeah but I think he needs sort of the top top tier that he could I, be in. I think he has a few options so 
I, I personally think he's settled at, at Spurs. Oh, no, 100%. He's, yeah. got, his, he's the, got his young family. And they're, so, all, they're all the players. A lot of the key players are yeah. a similar age. They're moving to the new stadium. Of course, they're going to have financial trouble in the transfer market because they've got to pay off the stadium. But they are a club that has been going places and they have a great side. So they have the potential to win domestic trophies. Whether or not that's the league, and I don't think they, they're capable... I mean, it's possible because it's a knockout competition of winning the Champions League. But I think he will be content if he starts to win trophies at Spurs. No, the he issue, will be. The issue he has is he's now just turned 25 last week. If the next season goes by and they don't win anything, and the, the following season goes by and they don't win anything, both very plausible. He's now 27, right in the prime of his career, mm. and he's not won anything. And he's sort of at 27, he's an injury away from never winning anything. Yeah. So at, I think if they don't win anything this year, even though they've got five years left on his deal, he might be looking at Real Madrid, especially if they don't replace Ronaldo well enough this summer. And Spurs will take two hundred million for him. Yeah, I mean he'd be he'd be worth that money. Yeah, so but yeah, I mean might even be worth more if another deal happens between now and then. Like if well, if, 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 if Mbappe was to go to Real Madrid for three hundred million, let's say, then the the price of Kane then inflates as well. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I think he has to be a proper contender for the best player in the league. No, he don't. He, I mean, yeah. Yeah, um, whether or not we pick him, whether or not you guys pick him at, at home, it'll be be interesting to see what everyone thinks. Um, okay, so moving on to number five, uh, David De Gea. It's an interesting one, this one, because it's really difficult to sort of pick a defensive player or even a goalkeeper for that matter as your sort of best player in the league. But is he? if you're the best player in your position, do you, you surely have to be in contention? I mean, he was... Goalkeeper of the season team of the season for four seasons in a row. He yeah. um, is so he's undisputedly, undisputedly the best player, the best, player, the best goalkeeper, best in, the goalkeeper in, the in the league. I mean, now Manuel Neuer hasn't didn't play last season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he played twice, yeah. three times. Uh, the only I mean the only other people who ever say who's as good or better is Jan Oblak. Yeah, who, who is that? Let's go who, with Boggy, but who we saw it in the Europa good. League. But again, with the same thing, I mean, he hasn't won trophies like, well, in the same way that David De Gea has. And yeah, because if if we look at it, so has De Gea ever played in sort of a really truly pressurizing situation? And the answer to that is yes. But it was in the World Cup this year. Previously with Man United, they've never, apart from the time they won the league, but that was comfortably in 2013 under Ferguson. Since then, he's never played. He's never United. Have never really gone far in the Champions League. He got to the quarterfinals under David Moyes once, but you've played in the Europa League for the majority of that sort of five-year mm. period, and you've never in had the Europa League. He didn't even play. It was mostly Romero. Exactly, and then you've never in those five years you've never had a proper t- uh, title challenge. You came second last year, but you're never close. You never. You never. I mean, he's had obviously he's had highly pressured games. We well, he, he I mean, comes to the World have, Cup and but at the Premier League he does play top sides like City, of Arsenal, course, Liverpool and against us. For what I find so incredible about David Gea is that it's very rare you see goalkeepers win games. Now against Arsenal at the end yes, of the season, yeah, yeah. David Gea won the game for United. Yeah, he did. He completely won there the were, game. With some save rare, yeah. that genuinely I've never seen a goalkeeper save. So a lot of the time, I and see a keeper save it. I, I, when I watch Kasper Schmeichel, I always think this. I always think, oh, that's a great save. But then I rethink and I think, if if he didn't save it, then it would have been a, a bad goal to concede. Yes. But De Gea often makes saves that I think not many other keepers in the world could have actually saved it. The double one for Sanchez last year, when Sanchez was playing for Arsenal in December... Yes where I think it's Lacazette hits it early with yeah, his left. He gets his hand there, and for him to have the reaction time to get up and get his foot up is just phenomenal. And as well, the save against um, Liverpool at Anfield with his foot, where he's yeah. able to get his foot across like that. I mean, it's, I mean, it's nearly every single game you see a, a save from there, and you think, well, I mean, that is something special. But he did have a very disappointing World Cup. And I mean, that is the problem. I think with that United... He's a goalkeeper who is tested a lot. Yeah. Because the defence in front of him 
on paper and in terms of ability isn't that great. Mm-hmm. Mourinho plays a defensive system and it helps, that makes the defence better. Mm-hmm. But they're not, like they won't defend one on one that well. Yeah. So that means he gets tested a lot more than other top people. So do you think Your he Courtois enjoys and... getting that early saving and sort of... See, I think it is. I think, I'm, well, some goalkeepers are very used to not touching the ball mm-hmm. throughout the whole game. They come out, they have one chance, they save it. Yeah. When Casillas was at the top of his game for Spain yeah. and Real Madrid. Yeah. He wouldn't touch the ball the whole game. And then he'd make that one big save. Exactly. But it's difficult with De Gea when he doesn't. I mean, sort of the World Cup again this summer. Mm-hmm. Spain, I think it was, he conceded three goals in the group stages and from three shots early on. Yeah. So the three well, all goals. three against Portugal. Portugal yeah. Against Portugal. Obviously, the second was a, a, an absolute blunder. I even think the... The, fir- the third one, so the free kick, I think he's positioned his wall badly because if you watch the free kick from behind it, yes, it goes over the wall, but it also goes round the wall. Yeah, it does. A free kick should never go round the wall. No. It should, it should, if it, you should have to force him to go yeah. over. It does go over, but the fact it goes round as well means it's obviously going to go in. Yeah. Um, so I thought he was sort of partly to blame. And then, um, I can't remember, was he at full? Oh, yeah, the one against. Um, I think it was Morocco. It was Morocco. And the 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 guy was running through one on one and it went through, it just I mean he just didn't really he set didn't himself. really set himself, didn't get out quick enough and it sort of went through I thought it was a On really poor legs. finish and it just goes through his legs. Yeah. yeah. Not that happens and I, I guess. I mean this, but, yeah. the first season under Mourinho, when United came sixth, mm. we well United didn't really we conceded less shots than normal and that was for me, De Gea's worst season at United. Mm-hmm. And that was when we were conceding less shots. So he wasn't ready to just suddenly spring into action. He wasn't like on his game. He was not like mentally maybe a bit... I think it's because he's got the ability. It will be that mm-hmm. he wasn't fully concentrated, fully ready to stop the shots. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's difficult to say. So do you think he's the the best keeper in the world? Yes. Okay. I, I think. Do. I think it's always difficult to judge this sort of thing, but personally, I would say he is, especially because Neuer's been out for a year. Yeah. But I don't think he's the best goalkeeper in the league. Uh, sorry, I don't think he's the best player in the no, league. No, I don't. I don't either. As much as I think he's fantastic, I think yeah. he's the best player United have had since Ronaldo. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I don't think Courtois... So if you look at how many points they win over the season, mm-hmm. you might think De Gea wins United maybe eight or nine, I think Courtois, Courtois wins six or seven. No, he does. Yeah. So I don't think there's that much difference between the two goalkeepers. No, not enough. In terms of how much they're, how much value they are to their teams. No. I agree. You agree with that? Okay. So now we'll move on to the last one that we've picked out of our, our list, and it's uh, N'Golo Kante, um, one of your favourite players. What do you think about... Um, the Frenchman. In terms of as an off the ball player, mm-hmm. I think he might be the best in the world mm-hmm. without the ball because yeah. he's. I mean, if I was, well, I'll never be a Premier League player, unfortunately. <laughs> you but never if know. I was a footballer, still young. He, yeah. I would be. He would be the player I'd hate playing the most. Especially if you were in that sort of number ten role, like yeah. Özil, or because you think if you're Özil, you think on paper in terms of technical football ability, mm-hmm. I am better than you, and that's. That's a fact. And that's a fact. But I will not be able to beat you because you will be on me the whole time. I mean, he did harassing do me, two years trying ago, to tackle yeah. me mm-hmm. the whole game. I mean, Leicester won the league. It was a fantastic achievement, and he was the integral part. As good as Mars, as good as Vardy was, he they managed to play four four two and win the league because he is two midfielders. They didn't play four four two. They played four five two because yeah. he's two. Yeah, he, he's, yeah. He's genuinely yeah. two central midfielders. Because you beat him, yeah. he slides in, and he's not really gone to ground, and he's up, and he's tackling again. Yeah. And people say, oh, his distribution isn't amazing, he doesn't score that many goals. But you'd never say someone like Hazard, like, oh, he's not that good because he doesn't tackle. It's mm-hmm. just not in his game. Yeah. He still does quite well for passing, and mm-hmm. quite well for shooting. I've seen him score a number of goals, mm-hmm. and he scored against United. Yeah. Um, it was two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but his, in terms of just how good he is... Getting across the ground, he glides. Yeah, and he's actually dribbling is actually quite good. Mm-hmm. Like I've seen him be a number. Of Do you think players. he's the best holding midfielder in the world? I mean, that's difficult to say because first of all, I don't watch um, enough of the. Uh, I mean, I've seen Casemiro play a couple of times again when I was in Madrid, um, and he is he is very good. Yeah, 
but I don't know if he covers as much ground as Kante. Well, how about Busquets? I know he's, what, maybe 32 I mean, now, but... I he's, I think he's 31. Is he 31? Yeah. Or 30. But he's... Um, yeah, he's 30. So he's still, like, in sort of his prime. He's still very good. And, and there's also, with yeah. his ability, he's never been a quick player. So mm-hmm. It's not like he's lost any pace. Yeah. But in terms of, if you put Kante in that team, I don't think you'd see that much of a drop in performance for Barcelona. No, even in though fact, he's not the... Improved. He's not the passer that Busquets is, but he's not poor at passing by any means. No, no, not at all. And he'll he'll win the ball back. Yeah, no, 100%. He'll win the ball back. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing we're forgetting, isn't he just like the nicest guy in the world? Yeah, Do you I just mean, want to give him a hug? Well, like? At the World Cup, <laughs> they won the trophy. Yeah. And I can't remember who it was, but one of the France players. I think was it like, was uh, Nzonzi. Yeah, it was like, no, give the trophy to Kante, because he was yeah. too shy to ask for it. Uh, and, and, they, and, and you saw in the celebrations of the World Cup the outside um, where the president lives and they were having a party and you, they were all singing the N'Golo Kante song. It shows how valued he is no, they within, know. within that team. And of course, he's incredibly valued within the Chelsea team. Yeah. Do I mean, you, that's the sort of thing that only when you're on the pitch, when you're playing, mm-hmm. you realise, I mean, if you're Hazard, OK, if I lose the ball here, it doesn't matter because the chances are Kante will harass. And also... Why well, he doesn't give that many fouls away, mm-hmm. considering how you'd expect a defensive midfielder like your Casemiro, like your Busquets, nearly every game they get booked. Mm. Kante doesn't get booked as much as them. Who's who do you think's more valuable for Chelsea, Hazard or Kante? In terms of winning games, in terms, I'd, of- I'd, I'd say Hazard. Yeah. In terms of overall play. It's difficult to separate the two. Obviously, I'm going to go with Hazard because I think he's a better player. Mm. And in terms of ability and just effectiveness on the pitch. Mm-hmm. But it is, our, it is very, and you can very, very much understand someone saying, you know, Kante is more important. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a fair argument. And I think, especially if Chelsea... Well, I think you'll find that the rest... There's still a month left of the sort of the global transfer market. Obviously, the English transfer market closes in, what, like 12 days or something mm. like that? Um, so Chelsea have a month to hold on to Kante uh, has a, it seems like Courtois moving on but those two players are crucial and if Chelsea don't get Champions League football the following year they'll find it very difficult to keep their two absolute stars yeah and they'll be in trouble they'll be in a lot of trouble because as much money they, could, they I reckon they could get over 200 million for the, for the pair of them mm-hmm. 250 million probably as, as much money as that is, you won't find better football players out there or you'll struggle to anyway. You can reinvest it in different parts of the team, but to find another Hazard, to find another Kante is very difficult. 100%. In the same way that Spurs, for a while, mm-hmm. struggled to replace Bale. Yeah, you you buy seven players... Thinking that they'll yeah. overall be as good as him. But, but no, it's difficult. So... Overall, go on, give me your, your top three. I think overall, my top three, I think I go number three, N'Golo Kante. Number oh, you two. think he makes top three? I think so, I think so. He, I you think, think he's, he's that important? Good. Interesting. I think he's that, that good, that mm-hmm. important. Number two, Kevin De Bruyne. Yeah. Fantastic footballer. But my number one, my numero uno, <laughs> is uh, Eden Hazard, just because he's a match winner and I love watching him play. Okay, fair and enough. For me... I think he's the best player he, in the league. He is fan. He is just fantastic to watch. I actually have quite a different sort of top three. So my number three is Harry Kane. I just don't think we've seen a player with sort of that power in the shot and that much to his game. He's a proper number nine. He's got everything about it, and he's proven it now over over four seasons. Uh, so my number two is Eden Hazard. I agree with you in everything we say. I just. It's just a. It bugs me how fantastic he is to watch, mm. and how he's not ruthless enough. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't score as many as you. Well, I'm an Arsenal fan, so I wouldn't want him to score many. But, yeah. for, but for Chelsea fans and for a, for a football neutral, he doesn't score as many as you'd really want him to. And then my number one is uh, Kevin De Bruyne. I, I just think he's absolutely fantastic to watch, and I I am convinced that in ten years' time we'll be having the discussion. Not. Gerard Lampard's goals. We'll be having the discussion. Gerard Lampard's goals, De Bruyne, Vieira, Q. He'll be in amongst that. And I think um, 
I do think he'll also go on to win uh, Players Player of the Year and more titles with, with Manchester City. I think the next step for him and probably mm-hmm. almost all the players on our, on our list is can you win the Champions League? Yeah. Because that will set you... As silly as it is, I mean, talking about the Premier League, mm-hmm. but I mean, it will just make everyone say, you know what? He did it the on the biggest stage. Yeah. Yeah, it will be interesting. Because the chances are if De Bruyne wins the Champions League for City, he'll have been one of their key performers throughout the tournament. Okay, well, interesting. Well, it'll be good to hear what you guys think. Uh, comment in the comment section below uh, who your top three is, and you'll hear from us soon. <laughs>